Phil and I'm the singer in Back to the Planet. Um, I'm also a painter and decorator who makes people's houses lovely and um, I'm also a little bit of a painter and I've been asked by the lovely Dick and Michelle from um, Blurg TV to talk about my painting. So, um, oh and also to answer three questions which are what made me start painting? Um, why do I like painting? And to show and tell some of my paintings. So uh, I'm going to do like a teeny little timeline um, just to show you and talk about some of some of those paintings because it's probably the easiest thing to do. Um, you'll have to excuse my videoing. Um, I haven't got the film crew with me today. So as you can see, I've set up some pictures that I'm going to talk about. Um, so I'm going to start here. This picture um, was done when I was about 13, 14. It's uh, watercolour on paper. Um, and basically, yeah, did that when I was quite young. Um, as was this one also around that time. Um, this is also watercolour on um, paper. Um, I did that when I was at school. Um, so basically answering the kind of first question why I got into painting. Um, basically I've sort of been painting ever since I was a little child really. Um, really encouraged by my family. Um, we're all pretty much an arty sort of family um, anyway. A little bit like the Weasleys. <laughs> and uh, so I don't know painting drawing reading has just basically yeah I've just always done it um, since I was small so moving on to these ones above these are acrylic on canvas um, these are a little bit later um, sort of around 2004 um, and I'm sort of kind of just sticking to just kind of one kind of colour palette and sort of getting into textures and things um, yeah just sort of sticking to a colour palette and just sort of using the paint and making textures with it really uh, moving on to this one I um, don't know if you can see that I'll start at the bottom because it's a long picture so it goes up like so um, yeah, I think I was about 20, 21, 22 or something when I did that. Um, again, that's just acrylic on a hardboard, actually. I don't know what was in my head at that time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> probably music. <laughs> anyway, uh, next one to that as it was around the same sort of time. Again, acrylic on canvas. Um, yeah, uh, yeah probably on too much E. <laughs> um, anyway, swiftly moving on, um, there's this yellow one. Now, in this kind of stage, I was really getting into sort of abstract uh, painting, really. Again, using simple colour palette um, and using the opposite colours to each other, so yellow and blue on this one. Um, and really getting into sort of textures and using palette knife um, I mean I use everything I use brushes feathers palette knife sponges all sorts of stuff really depends what I'm doing um, this one was kind of around the same time this was about 2004 as well acrylic on uh, canvas again using sort of the opposite colors of the spec uh, of the color wheel um, just uh, yeah getting into kind of abstracts um, this is kind of again from the same sort of time time range um, again sticking to the same sort of colors uh, uh, or one kind of color code and, and sort of mixing up we've got some metallics and things in there um, using using palette knife and brushes and stuff um, same with this little green one. Um, yeah, sort of more sort of throwing the throwing the paint on really. 
acrylic on canvas uh, looks a bit like a sea creature or something I don't know it's quite fun actually because you can turn it around anyway and put it up anyway and it becomes different things uh, the two little ones at the top um, acrylic on canvas again um, uh, yeah just using a few different colors um, more into sort of like the textures and stuff uh, with the, these kind of ones but all kind of abstract sort of really uh, anyway this one isn't abstract it's a flamingo <laughs> My sister wanted me to paint her a flamingo, so she got a flamingo. Um, and basically, this is like the first time using oil paints, which I'm really, really into. I've just recently got into those um, during the lockdown. I've never really used oils before, um, but I bloody love them now. Really inspired by Bob Ross because I've been watching him in lockdown as well. I don't know if anyone else has, but I bloody love him. He's great. Um, and yeah, I've, because of that, he's been, been inspiring me. And I'm just sort of made a few little paintings with oils. These ones are oils as well on canvas, inspired by Bob. Um, just little practices really because I haven't used oils before. And they are quite different. They flow a lot differently to, to acrylics, I find, and blend differently, which I absolutely love. Um, really getting into oil paints. There's another one that's oil as well. Um, yeah, thank God for Bob, really. He's really inspired me. But again, these are just little practices because I've never used oil. So, um, you know, just trying them out, really. It's not kind of really what I want to do landscapes and stuff but but um it's, it's good fun um these two again oil on canvas um yeah just just getting used to used to the paint um yeah i'm really getting into it this one's another kind of seascapey one but sort of more more of an abstracty kind of seascape so what really really inspires me is nature um you know, I can look at the sky all day long, watch it change, watch the colours change in nature. And really that's kind of what I think I like to put into my art in some way. Um, because basically I look at it and I could just eat it sometimes. The sky just is so gorgeous. It can be pink and blue and orange and yellow, red sometimes. And I just, yeah, I just have to put it put it onto a canvas really that that's that's really why I love painting um plus you know being a decorator I, I work with paint all the time so I'm really used to it and comfortable with it and I, I just bloody love the stuff really um don't know what else to say but uh yeah I'm cracking on practicing away um lots of happy little accidents and uh, thanks to Bob, he's got me painting again. So is the lockdown. There's my little love hearts that I found at the beach. They're cute, aren't they? My little sea treasures. Anyway, thanks for having a look. And thanks to Dick and Michelle for inviting me on to this arty mentory. I hope it's really good and I hope everyone enjoys it. Thank you very much. How's it going? Um, hello. Blur TV viewers, um, welcome to this edition of Punks Who Paint. My name is Kieran. I play bass and shout in a band called The Restarts. Um, and it's an honor to be asked to take part in this. Uh, it's a really great series. Uh, nice one, Dick. Uh, let me see. What what started my interest in, in drawing and painting, I guess... Like most people from a young age, we, we all kind of draw, you know, coloring books and stuff. And then as we get older, we get drawn into different paths. And um, I just always enjoyed it. Um, you kind of, you can get lost in a project or a drawing. And, you know, if you're stuck somewhere and really bored, all you need is a pencil and a piece of paper. And you can just create your own escape. So it's much, much like music to me. Um, Music also provides that service. You know, you can just get lost in either creating it or listening to it or enjoying it. Um, so 
So yeah, so as a young child, I, I used to like to draw and we used to go to a friend's house and, and draw. And then ultimately in high school, that was my favorite subject was was our class. And it was it was always like a, a bit of an escape from the academia of high school. Um, and ultimately I ended up doing two years art foundation in Vancouver. But at the same time, the kind of, you know, freedom of going to art college and then punk gigs were happening in Vancouver and a lot of great stuff around that time. Um, you know, bands like DOA, Take of Abortions, No Means No, House of Commons, Spores, just lots of really great stuff, a really vibrant scene. And that kind of, so my attention kind of went from like graphic arts to just like musical creativity. And uh, I, I still always kept drawing, but I kind of, I just went on, I just went traveling. So once I completed my course and, and then got into punk rock in Toronto and went to London and ultimately ended up playing in bands. And um, once I was in bands, I kind of took on the role of, uh, you know, creating the, the flyers, the gig flyers. And, and um, if, you know, albums came about or cassette tapes, we'd, you know, get stuck into that. Um, so, yeah, so my first uh, band that I was in was Armed and Hammered, and this was in Toronto. And uh, we put out a demo tape, um, which then turned into an EP. Oh, here it is. Uh, so this was with the band Armed and Hammered. It's a split seven inch with uh, our mate Sucker Punch. Um, this artwork was done by a friend Tanya. And I did the front cover. Uh, but this was my first sort of official illustration published, so to speak. Um, yeah, so it's quite a landmark moment for me. Um, and then my travels then took me to uh, London, where I um, got into the punk scene here and met all the local people and and all the bands that were playing and started to get a few commissions through. Um, uh, so what sort of once the restarts had been established and I was kind of creating their album covers, people were sort of asking me, Oh, can you do one for us? Uh, and one of the first ones was, uh, this one for the band Asrash from Minneapolis, who were longtime friends of ours, uh, and had been over to, England recent a visit uh, and yeah so this was just kind of like I just felt like okay I'll do a caricature of the guys in the band um, so you have Bucky, Pignose, Pukey and, and Red Skull uh, all real characters so it's quite easy to to kind of emulate that with the, with the caricature and then that led on to our mates uh, Suicide Supermarket Trolleys and they said, yeah, you know, can you do us a, an album cover? Um, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> I remember I, it was, I was a bit stuck. Like, how, how can you depict a suicidal supermarket trolley? So I just went with the obvious and, and did a shiny uh, supermarket trolley with a, a demented skull um, crammed into the top of it. And that worked out all right. Uh, many years later... Uh, new young band uh, Moral Dilemma asked me to do their um, debut release, uh, Right to Remain Silent. So this one is uh, pen and ink, but with uh, gouache. Uh, gouache is like a, like a water-based paint that's kind of like watercolors, but it's more opaque. So you can just get like a solid color. Uh, I think it was created for uh, comic book artist so it dries very fast and you get a really rich uh, opaque flat color uh, so yeah that was right to remain silent um, and then another band good friends of ours uh, left for dead did a few pieces of them um, this was the first one uh, humanity and I started thinking at this stage when I was uh, after I'd done a few album covers that, um, 
you know, thinking about doing it in, in the gatefold so that um, the artwork can span the front and back. Uh, so the original is, is the same dimensions. Um, and yeah, this was about yeah, just the pollution and destruction of the countryside. Um, and then more recent album, uh, Why the Cage Bird Sings. This one started out as just a pen and ink line drawing, lots of cross hatching. This is the original sketch. Um, and obviously that's my husband Colin who posed for that. Um, but yeah, and on, on the back of this I uh, is kind of a digital illustration. So this is using um, software packages on the computer, uh, Adobe Illustrator, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Okay, so moving on to uh, the restarts stuff. Uh, we started with a demo tape cassette. Um, this was our job club demo. So uh, kind of wanted to come up with a funny comic book style. So it looks a bit retro 50s and going with the, the whole kind of horror horror film uh, lettering uh, to try and help describe the, the absolute fear of being called on a, a restart course uh, as it would fuck with our, our gigging schedules. Uh, then this was our second EP, Just Gets Worse. And this one, I, I wanted to kind of tell a, tell a story. So this was an event that happened um, at the Albion Pub where we used to drink. So I've kind of incorporated the pub in the background, uh, with cross hatching. Um, I mean, wh what happened in the event was we, we had a gig, uh, I think it was Screamer and Coitus and actually SFA from New York were over playing and I was a big fan. So they had just played at the, um, at the underworld and I was like, Hey, can you come up and play at the Albion? And they said, sure. So they showed up with their guitars and stuff ready to play and just all this stuff kicked off. Um, turns out the landlord was a bit too handy with his fists and, and split open a friend of ours face. Police showed up and like just totally flipped the situation on its head. They just went, absolutely mental uh they were kind of charging us in like rugby formation to do all these kind of battle tactics and like smacking people with truncheons and so people fought back and started throwing bricks and it just spiraled out of control i remember brendan from sfa was going this is fucking cool <laughs> uh, but yeah it was the, the sad part of the story was i, I had almost completed two large-scale murals in the pub um, it was kind of 10 foot by 16 foot, just kind of pictures of punks and stuff. And, um, and that was in, uh, with acrylic paint on a plasterboard wall primed with, uh, uh, just emulsion. And yeah, so sadly I completed those and two weeks later the, the pub shut down, uh, turned into a hotel and that was the end of that. This is, uh, Sister Mayor. Um, this album came out on, uh, Active Distribution and Havoc Records, also later on PHR and Czech Republic. So in this pressing, I updated the back artwork. Uh, Pavel from, um, PHR Records commissioned me to do a piece of art for him. So I did this kind of, um, rat council, which has a bunch of rats having a meeting around a candle. Uh, there's a, a dead cat skull in the corner and uh, two thirsty guys lapping up the uh, bottle of absinthe that's been knocked over, obviously intentionally. Um, next up we have uh, the Restart's uh, Outsider album. So this one, again, I wanted to incorporate some uh, the kind of uh, architecture background. This is uh, Hackney Central Station, church in the background. And then I wanted some kind of psychotic looking punk. Um, so I actually, uh, on Facebook, I found a friend who had a, a picture of himself just kind of screaming like punk as fuck. And so I, I used that and modeled this uh, after uh, a friend, Patrick. Um, 
I don't know how happy he was though, because later he was like, yeah, it's kind of weird knowing that people are getting my face tattooed on their bodies and I don't even know them. But yeah, sorry about that, Patrick. <laughs> um, and within the Outsider release, we have the, the Dead Planet poster, which was uh, on illustration board, which is like a thick white drawing board. And this was another one. Uh, the monkeys in the bollocksology part. Um, so they're given the finger and uh, you can see they've been reading Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. So they're pro-evolution and then they've decided to uh, recycle irrelevant literature into the recycling bin. This then brings us to the uh, mobocracy release, the split we did with MDC. Again, so this is doing the, the gatefold thing. So it's one continuous piece of art, uh, front and back. And with this, I wanted to tell a story again. So there's a pub in Dalston on Kingsland Road called The Fox, which I've never actually been to, but just cycling past it, sometimes coming home from a session or whatever, five in the morning, no one on the street. And except for foxes, you see them everywhere. They come out at night, they ravage through people's rubbish bins. And I think at the time I was having some trouble with uh, Royal Mail, doing research mail order. And so you can see I've kind of had some foxes rip out a Royal Mail bag and they've torn it to shreds. And one of them is, is kindly shitting all over it. Uh, so I'm wondering if that was perhaps some lost research mail order there. And then moving further over, we can see, you know, foxes have somehow smashed the window to perfect chicken and are ransacking that and taking all the goods. And then further up the top of the building uh, is kind of a nod to fellow Canadians, um, Diglo abortions with their two dogs fucking albums that we have, two foxes fucking. And with that release, we, we ended up doing a tour with MDC. Um, so we came up with this sort of a nod to uh, Banksy's kissing cops, except we made them dead cops and made one from New York and one from London. Uh, and that was primarily used as a t-shirt. Um, that leads us to our most recent album, which uh, was the Uprising album. And this one I decided to go with uh, Scratchboard. Um, Scratchboard is, you can get in any decent art shop and it looks like this and what it is it's like a it's a hard board with a layer of like ceramic clay and then coated on top with a, a black a layer of black ink um, and here I'll do a quick demonstration um, so I start by doing a pencil illustration on the scratch board and this is why I'm shining a light on it because sometimes it's hard to see the pencil lines um, and then it's just a matter of uh, filling in the white and deciding what you want outlined. Um, so obviously, as I'm uh, drawing bones, I would want to give them a, a black outline. So you you do this kind of illumination thing with these outward um, scratches, uh, defining the, the black line. Um, and going all, all the way around everything that you want to be outlined. Uh, and obviously the more you scratch, the, the whiter it gets. So, you know, you have a choice whether you want to leave a scratchy texture or to have it uh, completely white. So obviously I, I want some kind of stronger whites around uh, because the bone is quite thin uh, to help define it and then around the, the teeth and the mouth and then just working it up to the tops there and having it fade out into a point and so there we have it a skeleton minstrel uh, playing a drum and from that release we uh, we did a split um, with the subhumans and again as the story goes we had no idea what each other was was preparing for the, the split seven inch and it came right down to the last minute and uh, Dick revealed, oh yeah, our song's called the 99%. And I was like, oh wow, ours is called the 1%.
uh, both singing about the same thing, um, but uh, just focusing on um, the evil and the good. Uh, so originally this one was black and white, uh, but I decided to color it in Photoshop. There, there is paint you can get for a scratch board, some specific paints that you can paint and color in this, but because we had such a tight deadline, um, I didn't want to experiment and fuck it up. So, and again, just uh, simply telling a story that the, the layer on the top is the, the greedy property tycoons um, of law enforcement, and then the people, the victims underneath uh, being exploited. And then on the back, a family around a fire barrel trying to keep warm, and this uh, life-saving heat serves only as an insignificant lighter to the rich elite. And then this was the tour poster for that album. Again, just um, taking from sort of local characters in the London punk scene uh, and, you know, illuminating them from the back. And that was the European Uprising tour poster, which ended right at the beginning of lockdown. We were lucky to squeeze that one in. And this was the back of the album. Again, just showing activist protesters and just touching on some of the themes of the lyrics on the album. And then the album before that was A Sickness of the Mind. So this one I incorporated a bit of color as well. Um, again, just dealing with the subject of mental health and how it's uh, viewed in society. Um, and also here we have the inner gatefold artwork. I uh, decided to depict a medieval plague-infected town with various characters in and about, uh, crazy town folk drilling holes in each other's heads, uh, the church hoarding all the wealth, of course, and the head of the church uh, depicted as a vulture hiding behind a plague doctor's mask. And then we see various characters, two minstrels, the Grosvenor pub, someone in headstock, and someone being poked in the gibbet, uh, all under the watchful eye of the local plague doctor. Well, yeah, there's one other piece I forgot to mention. Um, this is one over here. So did this for a band called Criminal Mind, um, based out of Bristol, great band. Uh, they wanted an album cover. So, again, focusing on sort of architecture. I, I love a lot of the London architecture just because of its age and, and kind of wealth of history. So I uh, focused on the Royal Exchange and just kind of wondered what it would be like to have um, giant-sized ravens swooping down and just plucking the heads off of of greedy bankers um, and as you can see they're trying uh, to escape but not having much success as they're extremely overweight from all their inherent greed so when we went to Australia I created uh, this tour poster um, so this is done in Adobe Illustrator using a Wacom tablet um, and I can just show you a bit of that. So this here is, this is the Wacom tablet. You, you plug it into your laptop and then you have a pen. It's got two buttons here, um, like, like a mouse. And then it has an eraser and a, a nib, which you can uh, change if it gets worn out. Um, so if I just, uh, I'll bring up the illustration here. Um, so let me get rid of the text <clears throat> and the logo and the background colors. And there we have our main subject, the car and the characters in the car. Um, so Illustrator is uh, separates, I draw the lines on one layer and the coloring on another. So it's much like, uh, your childhood memories of coloring books, except 
it's much easier to color on a separate layer behind the lines. Um, yeah, so Adobe Illustrator is a vector program, so each line, uh, color, and shape is a mathematical equation to represent that, so it's very small file sizes. Um, so if I click on this uh, color here, this is the background color, and it's a shape. Um, and then the shading on it is also itself a shape. Uh, but we, you don't need to think about that, you just need to draw with the pen. Uh, this is just how it optimizes the file size. Um, uh, so yeah, so it's, it's a very advanced program. But once the lines are on top, all the colors just blend in perfectly. Uh, it's very satisfying. Um, and then there's a special brush that adds dirt uh, because post-apocalyptic punks are dirty. And then once I um, showed this to people, uh, people liked it, but all the Kiwis were like, why is it all Australian? Where do you need to represent us? Um, so I thought, okay, uh, what can I add that's Kiwi? And I chose Peter Jackson's... Uh, Zombie Baby from uh, Brain Dead. So again, starting with the lines and then adding some shading and hair and then the color underneath on a, a third layer below the shading and some nice splatters of blood and then every a few kiwis, birds as well and then everybody was happy. And then last but not least, I added a, a koala with a mask uh, throwing a Molotov cocktail, and then I realized no one drinks Fosters in Australia. Uh, so I added a bottle of Victoria Bitter, which some people still complain saying it was shit beer, but uh, we seem to enjoy it. And then obviously the background is just, um, you can use like a gradient, which will make one color blend into the other, and then just drew uh, random lines to give sort of like a... a desert arid sunset look to it and then of course a, a nuclear bomb topping it all off uh, so there you have it that's uh, digital illustration and that's about it really um i'd like to thank you for tuning in and if you've watched this far um i'll just talk quickly about this last piece uh, this was our for our release gig uh in new cross inn and so we did an illustration uh, and had it um, silk screened up, and we did a limited edition. Um, so it features uh, Jezza prodding Bojo off the plank, um, with a few characters in the background, uh, a woman in a hijab giving him the finger for his offensive racist uh, letterbox quote. Um, but Basically, we have these for sale on our website, and if you've watched this far and you want one, normally we do them for a tenner, uh, I'll do it for uh, five pounds um, plus postage, uh, and you can uh, just enter poster 50 in the coupon section of the website, and yeah, thank you so much for watching, and hope to see you very soon post-COVID when we can get back to gigging and having lots of fun together. All right. All the best. Thanks again, Dick, and uh, take care. See you later.